With just two races remaining in the 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series season, the points battle is heating up. Today, the 10 turns at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park will play a big role determining who will be crowned this year's champion. It has been a grinded out, all out battle from the drop of the green flag four short months ago. Ontario, Pinty's presents the Clarington 200. It's NASCAR racing on TSN as we bring you the 10th event on the 2015 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series calendar. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Dave Bradley along with me is veteran racer Billy Rouse Jr. and Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits for us here again today. But Billy, another event here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Always a joy to see NASCAR stock cars try to tame this legendary track. You bet, Dave. These cars might not be the most aerodynamic nor the most engineered compared to their down south brothers. But I'll tell you, you bring these oval track specialists to this road course and they pony up. Side by side action, a little bumping and grinding, some passing zones not normal on any road course, but these guys come to win every time. It's all about the points. It's all about the championship. It's going to be a fun day. And it's all about the show. And one driver who has been putting on a show as of late is the 74 of Kevin Lacroix, the guy from St. Eustache, Quebec. Now, he's won the last two road course starts. He dominated in Mirabel, Quebec, and then he won in the last corner at the Grand Prix de 20 Vier, but he's been good. Oh, he's been bad fast. Last time we were here, he was running in the top 10, got taken out. He's looking to redeem himself today, and I'm sure he will. And one more note about Kevin Lacroix. Under the weather today, flu-like symptoms. We'll see if he can make it through this entire race distance. But another driver who's been on a hot streak is the 22 of Scott Steckley. He's taken over the points lead. Two wins out west. Of course, he won his last stop at Riverside Speedway in Andy Ganesh, Nova Scotia, nearly lapping the entire field. While his winning ways has been good to him, he now has a 12-point cushion over second place Andrew Ranger. And just behind is the three of Jason Hathaway, now trails by 19 points. But back to Steckley, he's still looking for that elusive road course victory. You remember back to the spring start here. He was so close to winning. Got tangled up with Andrew Ranger in the final turn, and the win went to the rookie. Gary Clute, but it's been 37 road course starts on six different tracks for Scott Steckley and still no road course win. Well, Scott doesn't show a lot of emotion, but I'm telling you, when he gets that first road course win, you watch that celebration. He'll be spot on for that one. A lot of excitement building for that first road course win. And our very own Todd Lewis checked in with the points leader, talked a little bit about that elusive road course victory. Thanks, Dave. Scott Steckley, fast here in the spring. You were fast here in qualifying yesterday as well. There's a lot of focus and talk about you getting that first road course victory. Does knowing you have speed in the car help you heading into today's race? Uh, yeah, it definitely helps. We Getting that first road course victory, it's very it, it's important to us, but right now the championship is our main goal, and, and uh, I'm definitely willing to give up a victory today to, to get a good, consistent, solid day and uh, be in the top five and go to Kawartha with a chance to win the championship. So today our, our main focus is definitely the championship. Okay, Scott, good luck today. Thank you very much. Scott Steckley will roll off six today and hoping to help solidify that championship. He will be starting today's race from the third row, a little bit of work today. But on pole, the 27 of Andrew Ranger grabbing quick time and qualifying earlier on this weekend. The Bullpar Dodge turning this course in a time of 122.807. It's pretty quick. Not really surprised. Andrew Ranger has just been spot on on the road courses. The Mopar driver, 17th career pole, second one this year, and he'd love to cap it off with a victory here today. And, of course, another championship within the championship that we'll be watching today is the Jostens Rookie of the Year battle. 
just three points separate the number 99 of Mark Antoine Cameron, who's the rookie of the year leader in the 59 of Gary Clute. All these guys have been going at it all season long. Clute got the victory last time out, the recipient of the victory after that last lap crash we've talked about. And Cameron, he's just been building momentum race after race, and he wants that rookie battle to be his at year end. All the drivers getting strapped in, preparing for this 51 lap battle here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Let's set it down trackside for today's command. In a familiar spot up front here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, it's Andrew Ranger who will lead them into the corner number one from pole. Alongside on the front row, Kevin Lacroix, as you heard, not feeling well. He's been dealing with illness the last couple of days. Just spoke to him as he pulled up here on the grid, said he's feeling a little bit better. But as the race goes on, he plans to be feeling even better still. And it is a long, hard, tough struggle here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. As we mentioned, 51 laps, and here's a bunch of Views will be showing you throughout the field. The 67 of David Thorndike will carry an onboard camera. There is Alex Tagliani in the 18. Quadruple duty he's doing here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park this weekend. And the 06 of Carlos de Casada will also carry an onboard look as the field starts to move behind the Dodge Charger Hellcat pace car. You'll see Andrew Ranger and Kevin Lacroix make up row number one here in the Pidgeys presents the Clarington 200. Row two has Jeff Lapsovich in the 76, and there is Alex Tagliani in the 18. Looking back to row number three, Mark Antoine Cameron in the 99, and points leader the 22 of Scott Stanley. There's row number four, and it's Alex LeBay in the 36. DJ Kennington drives the 17. Row number five is Matthew Skinnell in the 56. Jason Hathaway in the three in the thick of that points battle. Row six has Kevin Poitras returning to the series in the 87. JF Dumoulin makes a start in the 04. Row seven has LP Dumoulin in the 47, and Kerry Mix back behind the wheel of the 02. Spencer Gallagher makes his first start in the 24, and there is Carlos Di Casada in the 06. Ryan Clute in the 42, and Simone Dion Vienne in the 37. That makes up row number nine. Looking back to row 10, Gary Clute, winner here in the spring, and James Van Dom Solari in the 14. Row 11 has Riley Siebert in the 09, making his first start in 2015, and Dave Corsall drives the 94. Ray Cordemos Jr. in the 29, Anthony Simone in the 95. That's row number 12. Taking a look back to row number 13, Olivier Bedard in the double zero, and Joey McComb in the 25. Row 14, David Thorndike and Jocelyn Fecteau in the 77, and all by himself in row 15, the 34, of young Kate Blaksevich. Well, Dave, just his fourth start of the season, he started the back because he didn't qualify the car. He was at sunset last night and finished fourth. And there is the E3 spark plugs race analysis, a long race, Billy. Oh, this is a grueling race. This 3.9 kilometer race course is tough on cars and drivers. And there will be pit stops for fuel and tires here today, but a little bit of strategy at play as they'll take these 10 turns at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Well, this racetrack has some real good braking zones. That's where all the passing gets done. As you come out of four into that 5A, it's kind of uphill and you can drive it in as hard as you can drive it, get it stopped right there, and if you can outbreak the guy, you've got the inside, and that's the key to get off the last corner to go up the Andretti straight away. And that'll make another passing zone on the front shoot, but one car already down pin lane, the 95 of Anthony Simone. They've been struggling all weekend long with transmission trouble. Looks like their day is done. Now let's send it down to Todd with today's Leland lead up to the green. Todd? Fellas, just before we get underway today, make note that this is the final race for the 76 competitor Jeff Lapsovich. Longtime competitor in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series says this will be it for him. He'll focus on his son's racing. Also focusing on his son's racing this season has been Don Thompson Jr., former five-time national champion, a seven-time champion. Don Thompson Jr. recently received the honor of being elected to the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame. That induction ceremony will take place in October. I know we all send our congratulations to Donnie. Very worthy of this honor. And you can order your tickets. You can go to the website cmfh.ca. You can pick up tickets for that event. We'll take a look from the front window of the front row on board with Kevin Lacroix as he starts alongside the 27 of Andrew Ranger. The pace car is in. Field winding its way through turn number nine. And now turn 10 onto the front shoot. They'll be looking for green. Claudius Bateri for Pinties with green flag in hand. And we're underway here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. A 
up through the gearbox, all that NASCAR horsepower heading for turn one. Important to get down to the bottom line because you're going to have the right interest into turn two. Tay gets into the back of the 76. Some smoke off the tire of the EpiPen number 18, but everybody stays straight down through turn two for the first time. Head for turn three. Another great passing zone right there on the inside of turn three, but they stay single file. Everybody chasing the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Familiar sight here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Ranger has been so good here in the past. Dave, on the first lap, you could see right underneath the left front as he made that corner entrance, had that left front right off the ground. There is Tagliani closing up to the back bumper of the Tim Hortons Dodge of Jeff Lapsovich will ride on board with the 76. down this super long straightaway. Billy, you get a real good feeling in the speed this early in a race? Yeah, you do. You, you know what? The first few laps, you got to run the car hard to get it settled in, get some distance between you and your competitors, and then you can settle into a rhythm. But it's important to get some space between the cars. Down that straightaway is the fastest these cars will be going all season long here in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Well, hopefully a couple times Dave will get to look inside and see the camera shot, and I'll show you where the draft works and where they should pull out a line to make it work. Lap one in the books, and it's an important one for the 27 of Andrew Ranger. He led that one, and that's a bonus point. It's all about the big picture. Now we're down to two races. Talk about the championship. We're also starting to talk about 2016. You got to finish strong to carry that sponsorship into next year. Good look at the top six cars or so with the 22 of Scott Steckley just a little bit further back from the back bumper of the 99 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Kevin Lacroix continues to impress. You remember, he dominated at Circuit Icar in Mirabel, Quebec, and then he picked up another victory at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières, not in dominant fashion, but he used the nose to bump out the 27, get him out of the way. Dave on board with Scott Steckley up the back stretch. Hear him go through the gearbox. He's back far enough to get a draft off that car up there, but it really starts to work right about there, just as they come over the hill is when it really starts to work. And then you got to be brave to go over the hill with all kinds of power. The Canadian Tire Dodge, your points leader, sitting in sixth position currently. And there he gets a little bit of a wiggle. As we take a look at a battle for eighth spot, there's Jason Hathaway and the 56 of Matthew Scannell. The 56 of Scannell, Dave. You, you gotta, you got to understand the young fellow doesn't have a lot of seat time. Every race he gets better. And look at this on a road course. He's, he's dicing it out with the big boys. Hathaway doing a little agricultural racing off turn 10. Drops a wheel into the dirt but hangs onto it. It opened the door a little bit for Scannell as he took a peek. On board now with LP Dumoulin and the WeatherTech Dodge sitting in 10th spot. And the crew busy. There's Spencer Gallagher around in the Allegiant number 24 making his very first start in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. A tune-up for the truck race this weekend as Scannell goes underneath the three. <laughs> That's a veteran move right there. He come down through two, stayed to the outside, and the entrance to three is right there. And when you dive down the bottom, the outside car can't turn in, Dave. That's a veteran move from the young Scannell. And this is going to hurt Hathaway. Look, he is just getting railroaded. He's gone from eighth all the way back into a battle now with a 0-2. That's Kerry Mix going to get through. Now the 0-4 of Dumoulin is going to pick him off as well. All the way down to 13th, almost 13th now for the three of Jason Hathaway. quite happy with what they seen inside the motor. So they thrashed and got it put together before qualifying. What's some good news for the three team, Mike Gotti and Muskoka Air coming on board, a sponsor for this weekend. So Hathaway trying to give them a good run. But NASCAR is reviewing contact between the 24 and the 59 of Gary Clute. That happened in turn 10, resulted in the 24 going around and the 59 all the way down pit lane now. So he is being called in from NASCAR. So a tough break for Gary Clute, huh? That's right, guys. Drive-through penalty for the 59 car for aggressive driving and spinning the 24. This is also a good time to remind you that they are very cognizant of the pit road speed. It caught a lot of people last year. They don't want to have it happen again. Many, many drivers last time we were here got caught for speeding down pit road. It's a long pit road, so you got to be patient. 
How hard is that, though, when you're coming off so much speed on the back chute and you're trying to get it blowed up for that front pit? And it's, and it's so important because the first timing line is right at pit in. So you're, got, you're at top speed, and then all of a sudden you got to slow down. Here's a great shot up in the draft. He's starting to feel it. He was just pulling high gear halfway up the hill. Just as they go into this right-hand turn up top of the hill is when you can jump on a line and beat him the braking zone. He was just not far enough up, but that leader right now is Andrew Ranger, and he's putting on a clinic. NASCAR on TSN event from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park is brought to you by Castrol Edge. Make your engine titanium strong. By Mopar. Authentic performance. And by Pinty's, the official wingman of NASCAR in Canada. And welcome back. I'm Dave Bradley along with Billy Rouse Jr. up in the booth. Todd Lewis is trackside as we take a look at a battle for six. It's the 22 of Scott Steckley, the 36 of Alex LeBay. LeBay, hey, he gets all kinds of loose there, Dave, on corner entry. I Got a little say. too much break in it, but hey, it's making it work, and he's putting the heat on Steckley. The loose barbecue VR Victoriaville number 36 is coming on strong, but so is the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. In the Lacroix tuning Dodge Challenger, he's chasing the Mopar Dodge Avenger Ranger. Look at Ranger work his way through turn two. Lacroix got that one down pat as well. Making a run up towards turn number three. This sets up a perfect passing opportunity. I love this one, Davey. You let the car go to the outside apex of two and leave it on the inside. And the guy's out in the proper lane. He can't turn into three if you're there. A good spot to pass. Watching Kevin Lacroix's hands. Is he working the wheel too much? Oh, it looks pretty smooth. We've seen this movie before. Just go back to Three Rivers, go back. These two guys put on a whale of a show, and they're starting to get at it again today. And now you listen, the Mopar Dodge come up to song. The XLS Chrysler Dodge doing the same thing as Kevin Lacroix now in the draft. Down the end, trading straight away. Shifted at 8,000 RPM, Dave. 8,000. Look at the tack areas. 78, 7,900. Super stock at Sunset Speedway and a number of late model events as well. Well, Kerry, you know, has always been a great competitor, but always said that he wouldn't quit racing. He'll bring a young guy along, and what a tutor to have. We talk about Don Thompson Jr., a, you know, very deserving of his award, a great, a great mentor to J.R. Fitzpatrick. Kerry Mix will make a great teacher. And you talk about Sunset Speedway, NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series track, as you see a dice here between Matthew Skinnell and the 47 of L.P. Jubilee, but if you look at the Wheel and All-American Series points, you've got a late model driver at Sunset who's currently second in those points. That's unheard of. Well, Dave, that's Taylor Holdaway, and he's doing a great job. And the way that mathematics works out, when you win, you're going to get paid. Speaking of winning here, it's been all Andrew Rangers since the drop of the green flag in the Mopar Pennzoil Dodge. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix is not letting them get away, though. Keeping them honest here in the early going at the Clarington 200 presented by Pinty's. Here they come down through 4 -A. This is a great passing zone. Hanging right in there up the hill. The car buries itself in the hill. There he downshift on the brake. Touch the gas going across. 
across the top of the hill and set him up for five feet up that long and ready straightaway. A little crooked off the exit of 5B for the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Billy, how, how, how easy is it to get so involved in a heated race like this, a heated battle, to just overdrive your stuff this early in the race? It's that corner there, it's important not to get overzealous because if you overbreak, you slide the front. You get on the throttle to where you, you slide the back, and it takes all your momentum away. You gotta be smooth in 5A and B. Here he comes into turn number nine, Kevin Lacroix. Chasing the 27 of Ranger, he'll have an opportunity there. He keeps in line. They'll say single file down the front straightaway. What a drift off of turn 10 for the 74 of Lacroix. The 74 just loose up off the corner. We've talked about him sliding the tires. Andrew Ranger, I've been watching him onto the front stretch, keeps that car absolutely straight. The 18 of Alex Tagliani is down pit lane in the EpiPan Dodge. He'll find his spot, Don. Scheduled service for the 18. Fuel to take of the distance. They're making sure that those fenders are off the right front tire. We'll stop there. Alex Dagliani on his way. He is in the pit window. It's open now, but Tyler Case, his crew chief, likes to shake things up a little bit, try some strategy. And Alex Dagliani doing just that in the early going. Well, historically, this race never goes caution free. And so if he can hit early, put the fuel in it, when the caution does come out, he can come get new sneakers on that car and gain some spots. Top three now all by themselves in the front end. Problems for the 99 of Mark Antoine Cameron and the Graphoid Chevrolet. You remember, he came into this one leading the Jostens rookie race in the White Motorsports 99, and now he's well off the pace. 99 may not make it up the hill. Andretti straightaway is all uphill, and that car is not under its own power. But we're still under green as the leaders come on to the front straightaway. One more time, we're keeping an eye on that 99 as it limps its way around in NH Iron Motorsport Park. Kevin Lacroix still right on the back bumper of the number 27 of Andrew Ranger. Hey, this is a good spot. If you're a crew chief, I think I'd be getting my driver to pit road trying to beat the caution. It's inevitable that 99 won't make it all the way back. And Billy, you should have been a crew chief because it's happening. The three of Jason Hathaway is headed down pit lane and it looks like he will have some company. The 18 of Alex Tagliani will once again make another pit stop as well. So busy time here on pit lane. Hathaway kicks it into neutral and gently hits his pit box. Two cars making scheduled stops just as we go to the full course yellow. The three getting their fuel this time. The 18 of Alex Tagliani, they'll get their tires. They'll be done their service for the day. And you saw the crewman for Jason Hathaway replacing the radio with the driver's side of the three car. Problems on the 18. Wow, they're only changed the left front. Something's going on here. You should put both side tires on it at once. So Alex Tagliani taking the one tire. Jason Hathaway being held here at the end of pit lane. Now he'll be able to put it into first and get going. He'll rejoin the field as we are under caution. So full course yellow for the 99 that is stopped here on the racetrack. Problems for the Rookie of the Year points leader. And this is your leader on the racetrack. There is the 99 of Mark Antoine Cameron halfway down the Andretti straightaway. Well, it won't be a long caution. The tow truck will go out there and pick him up. And now they're finishing the service on the 18. Yeah, but no right side, Billy. They're just doing the left sides, and they took a lot of time in between. Even the crew member at the back of the car is shaking his head, and he threw his helmet at the pit box. All kinds of trouble on the 18 stop. Well, we'll call that a breakdown in communication for the 18 team as Alex Tagliani, Tagliani gets back underway. The 99 of Mark Antoine Cameron now finally getting a push, so hopefully they can get things sorted in that pit, but pit lane business is picking up. We've got a driver in from third, Todd. A lot of dancing going on here in pit lane. The 76 car makes a stop. They're getting tires this time. Fuel for the 22, the championship points leader, Scott Steckley. He'll be back out, but he'll be back in for tires later. So as we mentioned, Billy, this is well within their pit, pit window, so this is playing right into their strategy. Well, they got the fuel stop out of the way, and they'll save them tires for later on the race. As I said earlier, this place has never gone caution free. Four tires for the Tim Hortons Dodge of Jeff Lacevich and Don Thompson and his crew working things out. Todd? Pit stops continue. The 47 taking tires this time. They'll also come back for fuel later on. This could be it for stops for the rest of the day, guys. As this yellow continues, they make a make, they might make another lap, come back, finish their service, and that'll be it for the rest of the afternoon. 
Missed opportunity for the 18 as they had to make another stop. That's three on the day. Yeah, they started with a great strategy by pitting early and putting fuel in the car, and all that advantage was lost with the tire changes. They have a good driver, so they can make it up on the racetrack as Hathaway stalls it. Off of it, Laney manages to get it refired in the Fast Eddie race where number three is moving once again. There's a 0-2 of Kerry Mix in the Johnsonville Ford Fusion also getting service completed. Well, Kerry's a very good road racer, and he was looking forward to a good day. You know, the, the other driver, Mark Dilley's had a couple real good outings on the oval track, so Kerry was looking to muster up today. Not a lot of urgency around the graphoid crew of Mark Antoine camera, and they'll take a look at that and try and get back out and salvage some points. He came in as your Rookie of the Year points leader. He's now sitting on pit lane. Ranger leads. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Just before we go back to Green, an update on Mark Antoine Cameron remains on pit road. The team working feverishly on that transmission. Of course, leading the rookie points battle as we come into this event. They want him back out on course if it's at all possible. The window net is still up and he's still strapped in, so he's ready to go once they get it fixed. But we're getting back to Green here or looking for Green as we work our way through 8, 9, and on to 10. Onboard views from Carlos de Casada. Currently sitting in 19th spot in the 06. Side by side out onto the front stretch, Dave. Cautions, breed cautions, because now we're all bunched back up again, and we kind of get down through turn one and two. And we shuffle the deck. Look at the 37 of Simone Fiolpian, the 87 of Kevin Quattras up near the front now, and the double zero, Olivier Vidard, the 29, the black shape aircraft. Dodge of uh, Ray Cordemos Jr. all inside the top five. Have a great run. Matthew Scannell picked up a handful of spots on that restart. He's having a great ride here today, Dave. Kevin Quatras in the 87, a veteran of the Trans Am Series, has run a limited schedule here in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. You see a little tape out on the racetrack, but that's not going to really affect things too much. Again, you see the 24. I talked about that late entrance. You know, coming straight across from two to three and taking the entrance away on three to the outside car, and it worked well. Those guys picked up two spots. And there you see the 14 of James Van Domselaar in there as well. So he's worked his way up through to the front of the field. The 24 of Spencer Gallagher in the Allegiant Dodge also having a great run. Well, he's getting seat time for the truck later on. I'm telling you, he's getting an education right now. But these cars a little bit different than the Truck Series cars. Not as much horsepower and not as much tire either. Well, they, the, the other the trucks have got more horsepower, but they punch a bigger hole. We got some smoke. The trucks punch a bigger hole in the air, so the, the guy in light really gets a toe off the back stretch. And I think that smoke was from the double zero of Olivier Bedard making his first start in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Seems to have quit the Prolon double zero. But we'll keep an eye on that car as Caden Lapsovich in the 34 comes up and tries to stick a pass. He gets the door slammed across his nose. Oh, he broke the left front fender on that 34 Tim Hortons car. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But he was making a great move from the back of the front, running behind DJ Kennington. Pretty good guy to follow through traffic. A couple of young guns in this series. As the 06 of Dickasana, this is turn number 10. Big damage to the in-sync Dodge. Right in front of us in the tower, knocked the tires over as well, Dave. Yeah, you can see the tires askew and the 06 unable to refire right away. We'll have another look at what happened. Oh, I think he got a little help from behind, Dave. Yeah, and he hits those tires a ton, and you can hear the engine quit right away. the front end of the car right off the racetrack. A veteran of the GT3 ranks now on board with the 67 of David Thorndike. Thorndike is down to the bottom of the racetrack and the 06 closes the door. Just enough to get him off track and now the 06 has it refired but significant body damage to the nose of the InSync Dodge. No caution yet and a change for the lead as Lacroix goes through underneath the 27 of Ranger. Lacroix used the draft masterly just as he came over the last hill Popped it out into the breaking zone and caught Ranger not looking and he stole the spot. Now they'll have to complete a lap for this to count. 
And Lacroix will cross the line. He'll pick up the bonus point for leading a lap. And Ranger drops back into second. The whole field has to come through for that lap to count. Well, Dave, from the booth, we can see the, the course marshals taking a look at them tires from the fence side to make sure they're still in a position of safety. They're still looking at it. They haven't made a call yet. Should mention, too, there is nothing on the track as far as any debris goes, but it is just off the raceway. Look at this gaggle of cars chasing the 37 of Simon Giovien. Fourth spot up for grabs. While they're stacked up behind him, he's using the fast way around, and Steckley can't get the job done just yet. How about the 36 of Alex LeBay? He actually skipped the Oxford 250, which is a huge short track late model race down in the U.S. just to be here racing in front of the brass, the NASCAR brass and the truck series guys trying well, to turn that, some heads. Dave, that was the decision to be made. You know, the Oxford 250, a premier short track race, but when you race in front of the big dogs in NASCAR, <laughs> it's an easy decision. On board the 22 of Scott Steckley. There was a draft. You can see him close right up, and right about here, he'll stick the nose out to the right-hand side. Some smoke again from the double zero down the back straightaway. Steckley will take over that spot as the OVN up on the outside in turn number eight. He'll have company there in the 24. Caution is out. So a full course caution and down pin lane goes the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Dave with the caution coming out. Did he beat the caution flag to pit road? Well, if he did, it's a genius move because he will pick up incredible track position. Todd? Guys, a terrible break for the 27 team. They had pulled off to pit this lap just as we went to yellow. Now Andrew Ranger has to go right through and not get any service. Wow, that's devastating. As a crew chief, you think you're making a great call. Now you just cost your driver 20 spots. <gasps> he says it was open. That's crew chief Billy Burns on the top of the box in the Mopar pin, and he's talking with the NASCAR officials, pleading his case. The driver says he thought pit lane was open. There's a flag person right at pit entrance, and the flag is either red or it's green. The in-sync dodge of Carlos Di Casana is down pit lane, and once again, they take a quick look at it, and there's really the reason for this caution, getting that tire wall all fixed up in turn number 10. Have another look. Did he make it? And there it is. No. The red flag the is red up. The red flag was up when Andrew Ranger hit pit road. So Unfortunate. The, yes, but he took a drive through, and he'll be back in, able to get his service on this one. But your leader is down pit lane. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix is in, along with the 87 of Kevin Poitras, and your points leader, the 22 of Scott Steckley. The 74 of Lacroix looks pretty comfortable as he finds his pit box, Todd. Leader Kevin Lacroix hits his marks. This, remember, just the fifth race for this team. They haven't done this kind of pit work under pressure, going to work on the left side tires. Fuel for the 87 car also completed, done. He's down and out. And the 22 of Scott Steckley getting tires on this one. Sean Murray on the jack there, drops it down. He'll run across to the right side. A four tire stop for your points leader. Andrew Ranger in as well. Left sides are on, they're heading around to the right sides, and Lacroix is still on pit road. These poor guys are struggling. A very, very slow spot, stop for the go fast energy drink number 74. And Kevin Lacroix comes in as your race leader. He'll have his work to do when we go back to green. So the field finds its way here, and everybody will line up in behind the Olympic number 56. Matthew Scannell is your leader on lap 19. Just a packed house here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Everybody enjoying this race, but one driver missing, the 74 of Kevin Laquan with more. Let's head down to pit side with Todd. Guys, an enormous development in this race. You saw the difficulty with the 74 on pit road with the guns on the left rear. Now, after refueling, he gunned the engine, and apparently they have a problem, and they are broken and behind pit wall. A terrible break for Kevin Lacroix. Under the weather coming into this race was the driver, Kevin Lacroix. Now it seems as though the power plant, that 74, also under the weather, but the race waits for no one. We're heading back to green with Matthew Skinnell in the 56, and 
Alex LeBay in the 36 on the front row. A good shot from the 67 of David Thorndike. Now we ride on board the number three in the Scope Aircraft Center of Jason Hathaway. And onto the front stretch. Young Scannell is going to bring him to green. Here's where the mind games come. Scannell sets the pace. LeBay jumps out on him. Now he's going to slow down and wait for the Scannell's 56. Look at the jump Matthew gets down into turn one. What do you call that? A Texas start, Billy, where that, you let them get out ahead and then you jump back on them? Absolutely a veteran move. His father and grandfather both probably taught him that one. And the field fans out through turn number one. They'll have to find single file through turn two. A tricky turn here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Up on the outside, the 14. Uh, James Van Dopselaar. And how about the Castro Edge dodge of DJ Kennington? He started last. There was nobody behind him at the start of this race after changing an engine in that Dodge Challenger. And now he's all the way up inside the top 10. Yeah, but DJ and crew, they are masters of taking advantage of opportunity. They don't abuse stuff. They changed the motor when they thought they had a problem. DJ went to the back and just methodically worked his way to the front. He's got the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of LP Jubilee chasing him and the Steelcraft number 14 of James Van Domsel are in there having a great run. The 59 of Gary Clue, tire rub down the Andretti straightaway. And you remember, he's already had a pass-through penalty. Well, I'm betting that smoke's coming off the right front, because that, that, or the left front, I mean, that's probably where he whacked the 24 early on. But up front, look at this. Young Matthew Scannell, only a year driving these stock cars under his belt, and he's got Tagliani with all kinds of experience behind him, showing no pressure from the veteran. Lapsovich was quick in the early going, and that Tim Hortons dodge now taking a look underneath the number three of Jason Hathaway. showing his skill right there on how to get position. He's going to go the long way around the three, down through turn two. That's a long way to go, and you've got to be good to get that done. Side by side, and he does get it done into turn number three. Now, credit Hathaway. He could have forced the issue going up into turn number three there. Yeah, but Jason Hathaway still fighting for a championship. Not the right time to be tearing fenders up, and Jason backed out of the hole. And here's Tagliani down to the inside of turn four and five. Now we'll give him that spot. He'll try to cross back over, coming off of five. A tag Leandy with a great drive, and he'll lead him onto the Andretti straightaway. Give top spot to the driver of the Effie Ben Chevy. Up through the gearbox. It's a long, it's three quarters of a mile up that back stretch with the elevation change. LeBay still sitting in third spot. Kluke just behind in fourth. And here comes Lapsovich taking a look into turn number eight. Kluke's going to slam the door. But now Kluke is making a move to the inside of the 36 of LeBay. That's the passing zone I've been telling you about, Dave. They pull the draft up there. And at the last minute, you dive it out. And here's Lapsovich around the outside again. What a masterful move onto the front stretch. In what could be his final race in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series, he's looking young and hungry in that 76. Dave, he's been the bridesmaid here way too many times. He wants to take that next step on the podium. Riding on board the three of Jason Hathaway. One driver had a solid start, but is currently watching this race from the infield. Is the driver of the 74. Let's head there with Todd. Kevin, it was looking so good for you, but it all went away so quickly. How frustrated and what happened, if you know? You know, it's not that frustrating. It's, you know, uh, we're not in a championship, so we, we're just hoping every race to get a good result. But, you know, I had the, the pass for the lead, uh, so at least it's, uh, that's good. But it's uh, unfortunate for the uh, Unisalaka uh, in total car. Uh, the car was just perfect. I had the car to win today, and it just uh, didn't escape a uh, mistake dropping the clutch, uh, going out of pits, and I think I broke the drive touch. So it's a shame. Thanks, Joe. Not a good thing, you know, that we were under caution. He didn't really have to hurry. They were having a bad stop, and as a driver, you get impatient, drop the clutch, and stuff happens. Yeah, sometimes you get frustrated, don't you? As the field still chases, the 18 of Alex Tagliani, Skinnell holding down second spot. There's a couple of veterans, the 17 of DJ Kennington, and the 47 of LB Dumoulin. How about JF Dumoulin just chasing them there in the 0-4? You know, he's, every race he comes with us, he gets better and better, proving that he belongs. Oh, Clute gets the left sides off in the grass. No harm, no foul, just kicks up a little bit of dust. And now the 76 of Lapsovich takes advantage. To third goes the driver of the Tim Hortons Dodge. Right now, I think the fastest car on the racetrack happens to be that 76 Tim Hortons Dodge. 
No, Jeff Laps, which we talked about it, could be his last ride in that 76 car. You know, you look back on Jeff Lapsovich here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, four of the last five starts for him at this track, he has finished second, but his average finish, 5.5 over his entire NASCAR Canadian Tire Series career here. He's pretty strong on the road courses. Of course, he's got two young sons also involved in motorsports, getting involved in stock cars after graduating out of the quarter midget ranks. Young Caden, of course, racing here today, and Trayton, as we've mentioned before, racing a mini stock at Sunset Speedway, a NASCAR home track. Alex Tagliani out in front of Matthew Skinnell on lap 24. Welcome back to the Clarington 200 at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in race number 10 of the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series presented by Mobile One. Alex Tagliani leads at the Tim Hortons halfway update. We've had four leaders so far today, three lead changes, just two cautions for seven laps in total so far this afternoon. The impressive run so far being put in by your second place runner, the 56 of Matthew Scannell. Well, Dave, everybody else has been to pit road for tires. Young Scannell still has the tires he started the race on, and he's running up front. Track position counts, and being good doesn't hurt either. He's really got this down. And a good look at the TSC stores, number 87 of Kevin Quatras of Ford Fusion, has a couple hungry dodges on his back bumper, the 22 of Scott Steckley and the 24 of Spencer Gallagher. Battle for 12th there as Quatras will relinquish that spot. And Steckley goes around to the outside. Here comes Gallagher poking it into the inside. That's a great passing zone. <laughs> it looked like it was going to be a little disastrous because he was carrying a lot of speed, but he got it woed up and turned. And just in behind, you see the 25 of Joey McComb teammates in the TSC stores, CBRT, Ford Fusions. McComb having a good run after having an engine change. But a change for second spot, too, as Lapsovich has managed to get by the 56 of Skinnell. You think Jeff's hungry? He is sliding that car through the corners trying to catch Tagliani. Just driving the wheels off that car. But, Billy, you talked about Skinnell not taking tires during pit stops. The 59 of Gary Clute chasing him now. Also no tires, and the 36 of Alex LeBay is also on the tires he started this race with. Well, I kind of thought Clute would run that strategy because of that early penalty. He had to get himself in a different box, so they didn't take tires yet. So they'll have fresh tires to finish this race. They just got to stay in contention. It's a battle for fourth spot between those two young guns, the 59 of Gary Clute and the 36 of Alex LeBay. And Billy, how tough is it when you're a young driver, you're so hungry and you're on old rubber? Is it difficult to control these cars? No, you just, it, you, you drive to what the car hands you. So as the, as the lap times drop off, you just pick up a new rhythm and you just stick with it. Alex LeBay all over the back bumper, the CTL Chevy of Gary Clue, trying to get something work. And he's trying to get the power down as he gets in the draft now, chasing the 59 down the straightaway. On board the 47 of Dumoulin. Oh, look at the draft work. He's picking him up. He's picking him up. Here he comes up the hill. Oh, he's really fast. Look out. He's closing in. Dive to the inside. Get the spot. He wasn't close enough that time, Dave. But what a great look at the draft we got that time. Jumelé sitting in sixth spot. Now, we should mention, too, for Alex LeBay, it is his very first time racing here. He qualified here, but if you remember, he suffered a knee injury in driver introductions and didn't get to start that race. So this is his first time actually turning race laps here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And he's Park. doing a great job, Dave. Andrew Ranger trying to put the move on the 0-4. That's for ninth spot. And he'll get it. Putting the Belmar Dodge back into 10th position of GF Dumoulin in the 0-4. Chasing the Volpar Dodge, but action is picking up in the front of the field. Lapsovich is pushing that car, smoking the right front. They've bowled these guys up front, getting everything out of the race cars. Tagliani loose up off the corner. Lapsovich driving it in, locking up the brakes. They're going for broke, like this is the last lap. It is just over halfway, and then you're right, they are pushing like it's the end of the race, but everybody lining each 
fence across this racetrack. There's young Caden Lapsovich in the 34, having a great run working on the 09 of Riley Siebert. The lake excavating Chevy of Siebert just out in front as he's making his first start of the 2015 season. This is a battle for 18th position. Very youngsters heading up the back stretch, going through the gears. If they get up just an, oh, look at that, Tanglini loose again. On to the front stretch, and now they're in striking distance. Where Lapsovich is running here now, that's well within the draft. Down the back straight away, if you can stay there. 24 cars remain on the lead lap here as we work lap 29. Tagliani is your leader. Welcome back to NASCAR on TSN. The field chasing the 18 of Alex Tagliani, the 76 of Lapsovich holding down second, and Skinnell is currently running in third. But how about this little battle for fourth spot between LB Dumoulin and the 27 of Andrew Ranger? Dave, they're going right at it, nose to tail. Everybody wants some bragging rights. The 27 overcoming a bad call, coming to pit road too late, and they're doing a great job getting track position. Look at that cut from Andrew Ranger as he tucks to the inside of the 47 of LB Dulane. He'll take over that position. How does he maintain drive? That's some serious talent behind the wheel because you got to turn and get in the gas in some kind of rhythm so the car doesn't break loose. And here's a shot of the lead. The 76 of Lapsovich takes a look. Tagli and he all kinds of out of shape up on the outside. They're going to drag race side by side. Tags will try and hang him on the outside. Can't get the drive. Lapsovich is the leader heading for turn five. A change for top spot as Tagliani has an opportunity to come back. He'll tuck in line, single file for 5A oh, 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 oh. and there's a bump. Wow. Lapsovich chased him and chased him, never touched him, got on by in very clean terms, and Tag comes back and gives him a whack just to let him know, hey, I was the leader. <laughs> and he's second place now, but he is well within striking distance at this point. So we'll take another look at this change for the lead on board Lapsovich. Nice crossover, a little bit of spin in the tires. Jeff gets good drive, gets inside position. Now they're heading for turn four. He's on the outside, not the preferred position, but he gets him cleared anyway, heading for five. Tangley, and he just wiggled just enough to let the 76 go through. And once again, through turn number 10, this will let the 76 of Lapsovich lead the lap at the stripe as Tangley, and he sits now in second. The Ken Tork EpiPen Chevy has overcome adversity in the pits, just like Andrew Ranger has done. And now the 36 of Alex LeBay in to make his stop. Blues barbecue guys go to work putting on left side tires. And Billy, this under green flag, so you've got to be perfect. You've got to do everything smooth. Yeah, but it takes so long to go around this big old road course. You've just got to be smooth. Take your time and hit your marks, because you know you're not going to get lapped. How good of a call is this with 17 laps left to go? Is, is this the right move, having fresh tires this late in the race? Pretty good strategy. you got fresh sneakers on this thing to finish it out. As the other guys fall off, he's going to have fresher tires. Speaking of falling off. 27 of Andrew Ranger off the pace down the back straightaway. The Mopar Dodge is a sitting duck as everybody goes around. Dave, the right rear tire is going to be flat on that car. I see him wiggle. He's barely keeping it underneath control, and he has all kinds of car control. The left rear is good. The right rear is down. Oh, yeah, you can see it. It's almost shredded. So the 27 of Andrew Ranger will head for pit lane this time. He can't speed this time, Dave. No more penalties. Got to cut the bleeding, get the car to pit road, and get a fresh right rear tire on it. And points, the big thing for this team. Andrew Ranger coming into this one second in points. You see the frustration on his face, and he will have to be perfect. There's still a lot of laps left in the race for a driver of his caliber, but they'll have to be perfect here in this pit stop. Todd? And now an even more challenging afternoon for the 27 car. You can see the flat right rear tire. They're checking the grill to make sure that's in place. They want to get that tire replaced and hit Andrew back out. A terrible... Well, a 
as Andrew rejoins the field, Dave, he's not going to be able to save anything. Throw caution to the win and use it up to get back to the front. Problems for the 42, though. That's Ryan Clute. He stopped in the grass. Just a local caution at this point. You saw the waving blue flag. That indicates to other drivers on the track that there's a stalled car in that area. Not yet a full course caution, but a full course caution is definitely something that the 27 of Andrew Ranger could use right about now. Billy Burns will be sitting on top of that pit box just lobbying NASCAR for a caution to get that car out of harm's way. So something hanging on the 18 car. Looks like a brake duct or something like that. So I don't know if that'll affect uh, the plans of the 18 team moving forward, but we should mention the 27 Andrew Ranger came out of the pits in 18 spot. Now down pit lane the 59. John Fletcher sends his crew to work to put fresh Goodyears on the 59 car. They take a look at the fenders, put the tires on it, and get them back to the speedway. The left sides are on, the jack's slow coming down. Gary Clute poised to have a great day in the Justin's Rookie of the Year battle. You remember Mark Antoine Cameron with trouble in the early going. Clute came into this one just three points back, and they count every rookie position. That's a point, and there are a lot of rookies in the field here today. Lapsovich continues to put distance on the 18 car. And with the Truck Series here this weekend, lots of motorsports celebrity in the house, and Tom's standing by with one of them, Tom. Yeah, guys, found a special guest down here. Sarah Cornette Ching has run with us in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series previously. Got a weekend off from ARCA this weekend. What brings you up north of the border? Yeah, it's nice to be back home in Canada and just come watch some good racing and uh, try to see if we can learn something. Haven't done too much road racing in the past, so having a good time hanging out with Brandon White. Any plans that might get you back here in the future? Well, if we can run a truck race up here or something, that'd be pretty cool. This is a neat little track, and I can't wait to try it out one day. Good luck. Hope to see you again. Thank you. And she's actually setting records south of the board of the highest finishing female in an ARCA car on a road course earlier this year. She's doing great things down south. Well, ARCA is certainly the building block to the stars right now. You get one of them cars dialed in, then you might get a shot in an Xfinity car. Noteworthy battle there for fifth spot between Jason Hathaway and the 22 of Scott Steckley and a huge blow up for the 56 of Matthew Scannell out of third spot in the all big dodge. Heartbreak for the young men. He had a great race going on, and the engine has expired. We, oh, 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 we got oil down. everywhere. You can see that's Kevin Poitras in the 87. He goes around, and a couple other drivers gathered it up. Now the 25 of Joey McComb also goes for a spin in that oil. This will bring out the full course caution. So the car well off the racetrack, but the oil remains, so they'll have to clean that one up. Let's have another look. You see the smoke hanging in the air. Those guys went down right in the very bottom of the groove. Matthew Scannell did a great job to get it up out of, out of harm's way, but he left some oil up in the upper groove, and it caught a couple guys unaware, and around the 87 and 25 went. Yeah, remember the great run that Kevin Poitras was having. He did touch the tire wall, but not really all that hard, sort of bouncing off that soft wall. Imagine if that was concrete. The damage would be a lot worse. Onboard LP Dumoulin. LP gets it anchored right down and gets to the bottom immediately to stay out of the oil. Yeah, it's smart for both Skinnell and LP. You see Skinnell up in the upper groove, as you mentioned, then LP saw that as he started to blow up and got to the bottom as the 0-9 of Riley Siebert down pit lane, and he's going to finally get some Goodyear rubber as well. Andrew Ranger gets the pit road, and they're going to put some more Goodyears on that car. Andrew Ranger will feel like Superman. The 42 of Ryan Clute had been sitting out on the track. That car stalled, gets a push back to his pit, but he's many laps down at this point. Canada does love NASCAR, and they've come out in droves to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Come back, we'll take you to the finish. Grimsby, Ontario, Jeff Lapsovich leads in the 76 here on the third restart as we prepare for it on lap 41. It'll be a 10 lap dash and we have to give a big tip of the hat to the organizers here at Canadian Tower Motorsport Park. Miles Brent, Carlo Fidani and Ron Fellows have once again put on an 
awesome display. Well, this place is prepared just superbly, well organized, easy to get in and out of, and what a great racetrack. A great field of fans, too, and they're being treated to a dynamite race here in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. The engines pick up RPM, and we're back underway here in the Pinties presents the Clarington 200. Side by side, down into turn one, Lapsovich has the preferred line. Tagliani hangs it out there, a little sideways, allows the 47 to get in there. If he holds tight over turn two, he'll scoop the spot. Side by side into turn number two. LB Dumoulin up on the outside. He'll relinquish that spot, tag to second place. Lapsovich down to the bottom of the 18, takes a look. He's there, oh, he gets on the curb and hits him. A bump and Lapsovich struggling to hold on to it in the 76. Tagliani will go through as your new race leader. Lapsovich will fall back into fourth spot in behind the three of Hathaway. Wow, well, we're just getting ready to talk about the 76 getting to that top podium. One corner later, he's running for it. And there are still a few laps to go, and look, he's getting a little impatient as he gets into the back of the three of Jason Hathaway. You think he might be fuming inside there? I think there's a little smoke. And here, LP Dumoulin, he's on the outside. He's the cat bird seat. The 18 and him, great race into nine. Look at the power out of the weather tech dodge as LP Dumoulin will take over first place around the outside of the 18 of Alex Tagliani. 47, ditto. Great job protecting the inside line in the ninth. Here they come onto the front stretch. Tagliani crooked again. The three's hanging tough. Nose to tail right through this field. 42 laps in of the schedule, 51. And there are battles all the way through this pack as we ride on board the 67 of David Thorndike alongside the double zero of Olivier Bedard. The dark's been here before, but in a Formula 1600 car, never in a full-bodied stock car. Oh, there's a big difference between one of them Formula Ford cars and one of these big full-body stock cars. A lot heavier, more horsepower, and just wicked fast up the back stretch. Good look at the Castro Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington having once again another solid outing here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park as the best average finish of anybody in the field. He averages a fourth place finish in that 17 car. Well, DJ Kang, we said it earlier, he is Mr. Tom. The veteran knows how to make a race come to him. Currently running in eighth position with the 59 of Gary Clute right on his back bumper. Clute once again so good here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. The line goes Clute, and around the 17 he goes, but one driver out of this race and in the infield is standing by with Todd. With Matthew Scannell looking pretty strong early in this race, like that car was pretty good. What happened out there? Um, yeah, we were running in third, and uh, the Omvic IGPC Dodge was uh, really good, handling really good on the long runs, and uh, we just came out of turn two and into turn three, and uh, big vibration out of the motor and then dumped oil at the bottom and uh, the, the motor was pooched after that. Sorry to see you out early, we'll see you Kawartha. They've been great to watch him grow up in this stock car. That interview, Mr. Tom, he's the future of this sport. And you're absolutely right, Billy. You look at Skinnell, you look at Caden Latsovich, you look at Gary Clute, how about Alex LeBay, all of these drivers, the future of NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Dave, all with great racing jeans, and right there, the dad, the, the 76 car, he is pushing hard to get back to that top spot. He got pushed back to fourth, and he won. There he's inside the three, back to third spot. Great race up the back stretch. Well, you mentioned the father of Kevin, or uh, Caden Lapsovich, and he got a great run off of corner number five. We got oh. problems, big problems down the back straightaway. The 59 of Clute involved, LeBay, two of those young guns we were talking about, and the 24 of Spencer Gallagher as well. Wow. As David Thorndike manages to find his way through the debris, but Alex LeBay stopped at the side of the racetrack in the Lose Barbecue VR Victoriaville, number 36, and this is obviously gonna draw the full course caution. Let's have a look right here. They're coming up off of turn five. Somebody got into the back of the 59 to start all this, and now the carnage just continued to 36 LeBay, no place to go. The 24 of Spencer Gallagher was the one involved. That could be payback. You remember those two cars tangled earlier on, but a driver caught up in it. The 36 of Alex LeBay will be back.
Still under the full course caution here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. The 22 racing group working on the 24 of Spencer Gallagher. Heavy body damage to that Dodge Challenger. Dave, that's Scott Steckley's 22 team going to work on that car as they prepared it for this young fellow for this race. Just again, trying to learn as much as he can is Spencer Gallagher, but the 59 of Gary Clute also with heavy damage. You remember, he's heavily involved in that Rookie of the Year battle. A lot of damage, the rear bumper's gone, the, the, even the rear clips tweaked a little bit, but they gotta get all that fiberglass to stay on there, Dave, or NASCAR will not let him leave pit road. But they are gonna work to get him back up out there because he needs those rookie points. The 99 of Mark Antoine Cameron is actually back out on the racetrack as the 36 of Alex LeBay will leave the track on the hook, but the fans are all lining the fences, waiting for a great finish. And yesterday, after qualifying, Canada's best racing team hosted the Laps for MD Barbecue. Now, guests enjoyed some good old barbecue cooked up by the Pac-Man crew, while Laps for MD drivers took some photos with their guests. Uh, Joey McComb, Kevin Quatras, and Gary Clute all raced for Laps for Muscular Dystrophy, and this effort all headed up by Brad Miller. What a cool way to spend the day. Puts on a, a great barbecue for the fans, and what a great cause. And every lap led by one of those three drivers, money will go to muscular dystrophy. LP Dumoulin currently leading this one. We're still under caution. presents the Glarington 200 at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Alex Tagliani is going to line up alongside your race leader, LP Dumoulin, as they work their way through 9 and 10. Look at this little play by Alex Tagliani. Again, the 47 is the pole sitter. He dictates the pace getting to the restart line. Tag trying to play a mind game with him. It's not going to work with the 47. Looking back to the second row. Lapsovich, you remember he and Tagliani have a history in this race. Lapsovich gets up to the back bumper and into the back of the EpiPen Chevy. You call that one payback, and look at this. Lapsovich lost all kinds of spots, and now Tagliani lost five or six spots. And the 18 of Tagliani will actually blend in behind the 34 of Caden Lapsovich way out in the rhubarb. It's the 22 of Scott Steckley. And Dave, oh, we're watching all that three wide action back in the pack. The three car, Jason Hathaway, steals the lead from the 47. And that is huge when you take a look at the point standings. Hathaway came into this one 19 points back in the 22 of Scott Steckley. And look at how many cars are now between those two drivers. Well, him and Steckley, they're, they're the points guys chasing this. He's going to get an extra point for leading this lap if he can lead it. It's a drag race up the backstretch. The 47 of Dumoulin needs to get over in the draft to haul it. Hathaway all by himself breaking the draft. On board the 47. He's got the 76 of Jeff Lapsovich just in behind. Lapsovich could have helped him there on the backstretch. You line two cars up, nose the tail, and they'll be faster than the leader. Hathaway stretching it out. Yeah, he's got about a two-car length lead through eight. A bonus point is Hathaway leads that lap. Look at the 22 of Scott Stackley. He needs to get on his horse. And look there in fourth position. DJ Kennington in the Castro Dodge. Started out back, soldiered his way quietly to the front. Gonna get himself a top five. Two laps to go that last time by on board. The Canadian Tire Dodge of Scott Stackley chasing J.F. Jubilee in the Belmar 04. And the 27 of Andrew Ranger, the other key man in that points battle, is mired in behind the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Jeff Lapsovich just chomping at the bit to get up underneath the 47, but he's being respectful. Jeff is a true gentleman racer, unless, of course, you cross him. He's definitely letting the race come to him. You have to ask, how much is left in that 76 car? How much does he have left in the tank? He's been wheeling that thing all afternoon. He certainly used the tires up, trying to get around the 18. He's in the draft. Here we are right now. Here's a good shot at him. Here we come, up off the bottom. 
we're going to get the white flag this time by. Dueling got a great drive off of turn number 10, an even better drive for the Fast Eddie Racewear. Number three of Jason Hathaway. The Scope Aircraft Center's on board for the first time this year. And Jason Hathaway leading in the last lap. It could be the first time he's ever led on a road course. Now here comes Lapsovich to the inside. Lapsovich, all kinds of sideways, but oh, they touch going into turn three. Dumai gives him a run. Lapsovich able to gather it back up after smoking the right front. He's still grabbing a handful of steering wheel. And while they're beating and banging, Jason Hathaway in that Muskoka Aircraft Center three continues to drive away. And now he has about a five car length lead in the front of the field. DJ Kennington. Now closing in on the back of the 76. Kennington running in fourth spot. Here comes Ranger underneath the 22 of Steckley. That's big in the points battle. That's all about points right there. We got the 22, the 27, and the three all fighting for the points. And the three continues to lead. All in the draft down the back straightaway for the final time. Lapsovich setting something up, trying to get around the 47 of LP Dumoulin. He may not have enough for the three of Jason Hathaway. Hathaway needs to get through these final turns cleanly. Into turn 10, the final time. Chevrolet and the three of Jason Hathaway off the of turn 10 for the final time. He's going to win his first on the road course. That's the way to get it done, Dave. They, they changed the motor, started 10, and took it to the front. Jason Hathaway. The right calls in pit lane by Craig Masters and Todd standing by with the crew chief. Don't worry about being emotional, Craig Masters. That's an unbelievable win for this team. Yeah, this is uh, pretty special. We're not known to be uh, this good on road courses, so uh, this one's pretty special. Congratulations. Let's go celebrate. Just want to thank Ed Hackinson for keeping this season alive. We weren't supposed to race all year, so it's pretty special. They call him Grunt Masters. He's been with Jason Hathaway since 1988. They both worked hard for this win here today. That's Jason Hathaway's seventh career NASCAR Canadian Tire Series win. His first on a road course. When we return, we'll talk to him at Victory Lane. for a chance to do the victory donut while waving the checkered flag. This one goes to Team 3 Red here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. And there is number three of Jason Hathaway pulling into victory lane, but Billy, what a barn burner this race was. Oh, we said right from the top that you'd see it all bumping, grinding, side-by-side -side action, passing and passing zones that really don't exist, but the real story, Jason Hathaway and the three come from 10th spot, Brought a new sponsor, Muskoka Aircraft Centers out of Muskoka. <laughs> Welcome to NASCAR, my friend. Your boy just took you to Victory Lane. And let's bring in our Todd Lewis and send it down to Victory Lane. Todd? After a cold drink, dump a little down his back, and yeah, everybody's going to get a shower. As Jason Hathaway climbs up on the roof to celebrate, wave that checkered flag. Yeah. Do a little body surfing as well. This is an unbelievable victory for this team. <laughs> Known as short track racers, they love the short tracks. Jason Hathaway, a winner earlier this year at Chaudier, picks up his daughters. Take me through those last couple of laps and how good does this feel? I don't know, pretty wild. I gotta get, give me a minute. Go ahead and take a minute. It's Jason Hathaway is absorbing the emotion of this victory for this I team. <laughs> I didn't think I could ever, I could ever do it. We, uh, we had a good car and we, we got up front. We got some track position and uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. We, uh, 
Picked up a new uh, sponsor just, just this morning. The Skoka uh, Aircraft and Center. The guy uh, talked to me yesterday and uh, they're changing the motor. The guy goes, you don't have any sponsors. He said, not very many. <laughs> just jumped on board. But I don't know what to say. Jason Hathaway, winner of Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. You heard a new motor went in. Weren't sure what they had. They had a winner. And no doubt an emotional win for Jason Hathaway as they well up in victory lane, but a well-deserved win for that three team. As we take a look at the top 20 finishing here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, some familiar names and some not so familiar names. Some up and down rides today. DJ Kennington had some struggles early on, comes home fourth. Andrew Ranger, we've seen him on pit road a couple times. Come back sixth, what a comeback. Kerry Mix, the Johnsonville car. The black cloud has been over that car all year. Comes home 10th today, great ride for that Johnsonville team. And taking a look at the second half of the top 20, you see names in there like Ray Cordemanche Jr., Olivier Bedard. Bedard making his first start of the season. And how about in 19th spot, David Thorndike picking up a great finish. Comes races with us twice a year, Dave. He has to feel good that he come here, got a top 20 out of it, and took his car home in one piece. And we'll now check in your second place finisher, the 47. Todd? LP, boy, you had to change your motor yesterday. Weren't sure what you had in the car, but it all worked out pretty well for you. It all worked out good for us. I mean, the WeatherTech Benmark team has been working really hard with the King Sport guys, and uh, I'm happy. We got a podium today. We were aiming for that. Of course, in the last restart, we thought we had a chance to win, but uh, we got a little loose there in corner two. Uh, we put our tires a little early, and then we, we pushed really hard to be there. So at the end, uh, you know, how do we got the win? And then uh, good for their team. I mean, thanks to the fans being here today. From 13th yeah, to second place, not bad, not too shabby. We're moving on. LP Dumoulin on the podium at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Another solid run for your defending series champion, LP Dumoulin. But, Billy, as we take a look at the points from this year, it really is a three-horse race. Oh, we talked about it right off the top, how tight things were. It was 12 points. With Jason winning here today, it's now nine points cover the top three. What a barn burner heading for Kawartha. And a tie for second spot. Let's go down to victory lane one more time where it's a family affair as Todd checks in with your third place finisher. With both Lapsovich's, Caden Lapsovich with a strong effort and Jeff back on the podium once again. Pretty good way to finish. I know you would have liked to win, but another strong run here. It, it, yeah, you know, it's, it's sort of bittersweet. I'm, I'm really proud of Caden's effort. Um, he's just about as good a race car driver as they come. And I think you're going to see a, a lot of uh, great things from him in the, in the next few years. But um, Disappointing for me, you know. Um, well, it's it's a pretty respectable run. It's uh, it's it's still not what we wanted, but um, you know that's how it goes sometimes. And uh, we've had a lot of fun, and um, we're still having fun. So uh, I'm going to sit back and sit up, get up on the pit box, and uh, maybe turn some more wrenches than I'm used to, and uh, help the boys out. So, Caden, a pretty strong effort for you too with a top ten finish. Yeah, uh, you know we had to start a rear yesterday, but um, you know. <laughs> Thanks, bud. But, uh, you know, I couldn't be prouder of myself and the whole crew for charging and coming back to the field to end up with the top five. Um, I think we had a better car than where we finished. It just it got rough out there, and it was... You weren't top five. I had a car. I, I think... <laughs> but, See, look at that. Father and son. Yeah. But, um, you know, we'll come back next year, and I think we'll be even stronger. Caden Lapsovich, Jeff Lapsovich. Terrific runs, both of them, and we'll, good news is we'll see the Lapsoviches here at the racetrack for a long time to come. And podium celebrations, Ed Hackinson, all smiles there in the green shirt as the crew, they are number one here today. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.